G'day, this is Kane Corns, and this is what really happened. Well, I am joined by an AFL Hall of Famer. He's a Brownlow medalist. He's a dual premiership player. He starred for Essendon in the 90s and then was the inaugural captain for Port Adelaide. When they entered the competition, he needs no introduction. Gavin Wanganine is my guest today. Gav, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me, Kane. How are you? I'm good. Now, we are doing a series on the AFL, getting to the bottom of things that people may not know about and trying to find the story um, beneath the story, if that makes sense. I want to take you back to 2004. Um, you're in the veteran stages of your career with Port Adelaide and we're playing in a prelim final. What are your memories of the 2004 prelim? Yeah, certainly in the veteran stage of my career, the old bones stage of my career. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, early part of that prelim final in 04 was, uh, as you know, Kane, it was uh, it was worrying times, you know, for us as a team because the Saints had got off to such a great start and big Fraser Garrick had kicked his 100th goal. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise that the fans came in onto the footy field and, um, you know, interrupted their uh, momentum. So we were certainly struggling in and I, as an individual, was struggling in that first half. The St Kilda players are telling the fans to get off the ground here. They know they've got the momentum. And uh, how will it affect them? Gav, can you remember what was said as a playing group when we did have that couple of minute breather after the fans did run on the ground after Garrick's 100? A few, a few of the boys just saying, hey, look, let's regroup here, guys. This is good for us. Now, you're playing forward at this stage. You, you start across all positions. As a defender, you started, you played midfield. Why were you playing forward in this particular day? That's a good question. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I started my career as a, a forward slash midfielder as a young fella. Then I went into defence. Sheeds moved me into defence and had a you know, great career in defence. And then I was used as a utility. I'd always get a chance to go into the midfield, into the engine room and, 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 and have a bit of a crack there and had my best ever year. And actually, you know, 03, and you remember that year that I had, it was a, my best ever year being freed up to play in the midfield. Gee, I love getting in the midfield. Gee, you get so many opportunities there. But for this game here, I guess, you know, like I said before, Kane, I was at the end of my footy career. I had the old bones, so I had to sort of play in a lot of experience. So I, I guess Choco felt that, you know, he needed me in, in, a, in a forward pocket to try and kick a goal. Goals were scarce. So in the first half, you, you basically hardly touched the footy, Gav, which is foreign to you, usually around the footy and getting plenty of it. You walk in at half time in a big game and you've hardly touched it. What's going through your mind? <laughs> I'm just so shattered. I'm so peed off. I am the pressure that is on you as an individual and let alone the team. As you know, Kane, the, you know, the, the previous two or three years, we dominated the competition for no reward in September. So the air was very, very thick. You know, you could slice it. It was so thick. Um, so just walking down the race, a lot of things go through your mind. A million, million and one things go through your mind, I guess. You just got to get in there and, and regroup. And, you know, a few words were said from Choco. Your brother, um, Chad, even said something to me, you know, under the pressure that, you know, he was on. I think he said, come on, Gav. You know, it was, it was just, come on, Gav, we need you. Or something like, with the, you know, he's passionate. You know, mm. words and and then Choco along those lines is getting come on. It was like real passion in his voice. You know, we need you, Gab. We bloody need you. Come on. That's the only spray I can remember him giving you from the time that I played with you. It was foreign. He knew that you didn't really need a spray to be motivated, Gab. But on this particular day, he must have seen something and thought he just needs a little bit here, Gav. And I'm going to go to a place that perhaps I haven't gone to with him before. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think um, I think it's the pressure was there. It was it was almost like there's no holding back here. You can't hold back. You can't die wondering. So I just knew that bloody hell, if I you know I've got to do something in the second half, and we we all had to, not just myself as an individual, but um, it was uh, you know a really important second half. I think actually I think I kicked my goals in the last quarter, wasn't it? So um, yeah, thank goodness <laughs> it turned out the way it did. So take us through the goals, Gav. The first one was a set shot from outside 50. Were you confident in the distance? Because it was a long way out. Yeah, Kane, I, I remember. So, you know, the last quarter, I just sort of had to really just bloody grind the teeth a bit harder. And, 
you know, flare the nostrils. You had to get a little bit angry um, with yourself and with every, and everyone. So I think it was a sense clearance and um, someone got the quick kick, might have been yourself, out of the square, on the boot, came out. And, you know, all good forwards are in front, of course. Uh, yeah, and of course. I moved to the front and dived and took a, a, a little a chest mark just off the ground. It was on the 50 metre mark. So um, it was a fair way out, like you mentioned, Kane. And yeah, I was a little, uh, as I had those old bones, I was a little bit concerned of the distance. Um, you know, in my heyday, I would have easily just gone back to it. Yep, okay, you can put this one down just distance wise. So. But anyway, so I went back and I had to kick it from 55, obviously, because the man the mark was on the 50. So important. Yeah. I've got a goal here. We were two goals, what, 11 points down or 10 points down or something like that. So, yeah, sort of just ran around a fraction to my right just to get that hook in so I can get a little bit of extra distance. And, yeah, uh, thank goodness it uh, 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 went through. That is a kick from the top shelf. Uh, hit the fence, uh, 60 metre drop punt, not bad for old bones there. So, yeah. <laughs> as you get older, as does, it, the as distance older. Get, does, it get, does the distance get longer? Does the story exaggerate? Do you put a bit of mayonnaise on it? I don't exaggerate, buddy. So, Gav, the second goal needs no explanation. It was freakish. We're showing it now. You pick it up. From the moment you gather the ball, do you know you're having a shot? Quarter, surely there'll be a score. There is. There's a major score. It was an inside 50, um, you know, stoppage, and I was playing as a small forward. So I'm getting involved in this stationary here. It's only a minute or so to go. We need a goal. So I, I rolled the dice and ran, ran, ran through the stoppage. I think I read a, read the tap off Dean Brogan's hand from memory. The ball came towards the boundary line. I ran onto it with a bit of speed and those old legs. And um, <laughs> there's no way. And I practice. We we practice those shots at training all the time. So. And in the backyard growing up as a kid. So at that point of the game, you're not looking for a pass here. You're, you're looking to win. You're looking to back yourself in. So I just visualised kicking to that far left side post with a little, little bit of late, you know, fade coming back in and let sail. And the rest is history. He is a freak, isn't he? <laughs> this is an unbelievable goal. So that puts us in front, and then we've got to hang on. And there are some desperate times. Like, they had the opportunity, St Kilda, I think, to smother in the goal square between Sean Burgoyne and my brother knocking it over the boundary line. Then we hung on. When that's far and sound... And they are there! What's your emotion? It's a bit like a... Am I awake here? Is this... Am I... Am I like, it's a dream. Am I going to wake up and this is not happening? You know, we got the win when we probably shouldn't have won the game. I mean... Yeah. We probably weren't the better side on the day, but sometimes in football you can still, you know, muscle out a win when you're not the best, you know, team on the ground. So it was just one of those days, and and what was riding on it was the the most important thing. Like it was a grand final berth on the end of this game, and it's probably fair to say that you know if St Kilda had gone on to to beat us, they they might have won a premiership. So mm. sorry to you, all you Saints supporters out there. I know it's been a long time. But we had to get one in our first uh, our first AFL Premiership as well in 04. So it's a, it's a proud moment, as you, as you know, Kane. And the next week, you, you just played with freedom, Gav. Like, yeah, Byron Pickett won the North Smith medal, so deserving. But it could have easily gone to yourself. Four goals the next week. Did you just go out there and play with some freedom and took that confidence from your second half in that prelim into the big game? Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely yeah, a little bit of confidence that helped. I think that when you're, you know, 31 years of age, you know, going for 32, it's your last race, right? your last crack. And I played my first ever premiership at 20 years of age. So it was 11 years ago, 11 years prior. I never thought I'd play in another premiership. I thought my chances were out the window. And, you know, I was nervous, you know, the night before, the morning of, I couldn't really eat that well. I was just hoping and bloody praying, and I've got to win this, you know. There was all these... It just goes to show sometimes there's doubts that go through your mind, but doesn't you, you don't have to let doubts define, you know, how you're going to go in life or in, in you know, your performances on, on the footy field. Doubt can be a good thing because you want to make sure that, you know, those things don't happen. You, you've actually got a, uh, an ability or an opportunity to make sure they don't happen. And this is one of those. throughout a footy career, you know, you can get, you know, judged on how you're playing finals, you know, and especially grand finals. Um, it was nice to be able to make a, you know, a four-goal contribution in that, in that, you know, 10-minute period. Just go bang, 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 bang. That was yeah. nice. Uh, and you celebrated it too. 
Yeah, I've never been one for celebrating, like, have I? No, no, you haven't. You know, I kick some rippers over the years and I don't get my hands up in the air like this too much. <laughs> but I tell you what, on grand final day, that's when you're doing it. <laughs> Gav, I love stories. One of my favourite footy stories. Thank you for giving us an insight into what happened at halftime of that prelim final. And if it wasn't for you, you know, I certainly wouldn't be a premiership player and there would be 20 other, one other of my teammates that wouldn't be. So we're ever indebted to you and your performance on those two days. And thank you for giving us an insight into what happened behind the scenes today. Pleasure, Kane. Pleasure. Thank you.